This is James Packard coming at you from Western Welding Academy. Today I'm going to show you how to do a 2G 4-inch Schedule 80 open butt B-groove weld. We're going to start out prepping our piece of pipe. I'll show you a little trick with that. You get a 4-inch piece of pipe, get a 4.5-inch grinding disc. You can face it off just like it's on a machine. Then we're going to set that in a 2G, get our gap, put a couple tacks in it, and we're going to run a root with 6010. We'll grind that off. We'll run a hot pass with 7018. We'll run our fill with 7018, and we'll cap it with 7018. Okay, there's the trick. When you're grinding the land on your piece of pipe, you got a four inch piece of pipe, you take a four and a half inch grinding disc, and you set that, set that on there just like so, so it's nice and flat, and that'll work with any piece of pipe within reason. If you got a six inch piece of pipe, grab a seven inch disc. If you got a three inch pipe, four and a half inch, four inch, you can use five inch and so on until you get out of, out of your grinding disc ranges. So I'm gonna grind this up real quick and I'll show you just how nice it turns out. There you have it. Probably took less than a minute. Took less than a minute to go from a nice edge down to about a 332 land. Just like our video with the 2G plate, we're gonna reach in there with the file. Knock that burr out of there. Make sure our land is exactly what we want it. There's what it looks like. Put that disc on there flat. I want you to notice Western Welding Academy, the only place I know of that'll get you a bevel like that when you're learning how to weld. We've got some special equipment for that. We're going to get into the tack of this. Prep's done. I got the gap set at about 330 seconds, about a 332 land. We're ready to start welding on this. We want to put about an inch, maybe an inch and a half tack in there so nothing moves around while we're trying to set up our fit. It has a tendency to open up on the opposite side of the tack. Pull your space wire out, pull that gap back down to where you want it, roughly the 332. Tack directly opposite of that first tack, and we'll tack another one wherever the gap seems like it's, it's correct. Now I always tack kind of the same direction if it's all possible, starting from life, left to right. I always tack running the same direction if possible, starting from left to right. That tends to even that gap out. It pulls one way when you tack one direction, then when you do that opposite, it pulls everything back to where it needs to be. I'll check that gap one more time with my spacing wire to make sure everything's nice and even. Oh man, it's gonna be pretty good welding right there. We'll put, a, we'll put a tack on this side, the gap's just a shade bit wider. The gap's just a little bit more wide on this side. Okay. Now, we're ready to start welding. I'll probably quarter this out. I'll start on this tack, running left to right, get to about center line right there, and I'll stop. When I stop, I'm gonna run around and, and feather any tack that I need to feather. I'm gonna hit it with a grinder to make sure I make the tie-ins really good. When I come off of these tacks, 
I'm going to start half inch, three quarters back behind my keyhole there. And I'm going to start pushing before I get to that keyhole. I should see that keyhole light up ahead of me. And that way I know I made that tie in really nice. Got it. That was a good tie in. Now that welding, that, that gap is so nice, I overshot where I was going to stop a little bit because I just didn't want to quit. Now we'll run around that with a grinder, feather our, feather our tacks that are necessary. I always, I always grind the start of my tack. I, I, don't, I rarely grind the stop where the keyhole is because that tends to be pretty thin anyways, but I'll grind that start because that's always a real heavy spot. Now we'll get in here real close. Hey, there's something I want you to see. When I grind my tacks, when I grind my tacks, this is how I do it every time. It's like a machine. I do it the same way every time. There's a dark spot right in the center. It, it's blue. I don't know if that's how it looks on camera, but it's blue. And you can see the lines, one above and one below, which represents that root face. I grind it until that turns blue and I see those lines and then I stop. That is gonna be a decent, a decent tie-in right there. And just about every tack I do will turn out just like that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna make the weld opposite of what I just did. That's called quarter, quartering out the pipe. Uh, the reason for that is when you're making a fit, let's say you're putting a 90 on a piece of pipe or a T or some sort of fitting, flanges. You put your three tacks in, you run one quarter, you check your dimensions, and you run the top quarter to make sure everything stays nice and square. So you're not running the bottom or the one side and pulling everything over. You don't want to do that. You want everything to stay nice, square, plumb, and level. So that's why you quarter the pipe. I run this quarter, now I'm going to run the opposite quarter. Uh, you don't have to do it on straight joints most of the time, but it's always a good habit to get into. a tie in. I didn't I didn't grind that tie in because I was coming from a keyhole to a keyhole. Like I said before I rarely grind those because they tend to have a little bit of a thin spot anyways. Them tie ins look good. Now I'm gonna knock down this little heavy spot here that I gotta come into next just so I can keep it nice and smooth.
when you're welding a 2G, it has a tendency to want to eat the bottom edge of the pipe out more than it does the top, simply because gravity's helping us out. So I'm continually kind of watching that top edge, and I kind of got to help it up there sometimes. You watch the end of your, your rod there, and if it starts moving like it's going to eat the bottom out, you help it up to the top and make sure that it's cutting the top out. Uh, don't just swing up there and cut it out. Now you got to hold it up there a little bit to make sure you don't undercut the inside. So the last quarter of weld I just did, I came out of two keyholes. Came out of one keyhole into another. Now I'm doing just the opposite of that. I'm coming out of a, stop, a start and into a start. And so the tie end's going to be a little different. I'm going to have to give a little bit more pressure on the way into that. There you have it. All we got to do now is weld. I take that back. We got to grind our wagon tracks out. Okay. Now, like I said in the in the 2G plate video, for those of you who, who don't have quite as much experience, grind your weld clean. Get rid of those wagon tracks. And I want you to notice how that's got a nice U shape on it. From the top of the bevel to the bottom of the bevel, it's got a real nice smooth transition. That 7018 likes that. You don't want to cut a big a big valley in there with a bunch of sharp corners you gotta worry about. We're gonna we're gonna put our hot pass on here next. Same as the 2G plate, they call it a hot pass because you're welding on some thin metal after you grind that garbage out of there. We use some 7018 just like we did on the 2G plate uh, plate weld. We'll just keep our temperature the same. Now that's probably the fastest hot pass you've ever seen. No, we had it in, uh, what's that, what do you call it? Time lapse? Yeah. <laughs> that's probably the fastest hot pass you've ever seen. And this is what should come out like right here. Nice and flat across the middle. Nice and smooth, no slag, no undercut. Ready to go. Now we're gonna run a two bead fill. A quick bead on the bottom, one on top, and flush that out, get it set up for our cap. Okay, that's our fill pass right there. That's right on top of the hot, that's a two bead fill. Should be just flush. Little bit of an edge left over, something to follow. I'm gonna go ahead and come across here with a grinder right on this bottom edge. Just to give myself a little bit of a better line to follow for that cap. We, don't, we want a really nice straight, even cap. You notice that top edge, we're still just a little under flush, which is what we're looking for. There's a four inch schedule 80 on a 2G. Three bead cap, two bead fill, turned out pretty nice. Whoop. That's it for me. This video was helpful. Hit that like, subscribe button, check out our other socials on the link below. We'll see you on the next weld.